You'll always lose. And you sympathize. newsworthy stories around London, I gotta get stuck with a great Varelli. He must have something. Yeah, well, we'll soon find out. You got that expert on mesmerism all set, that Dr. Uh, Heller? Oh, I spoke to him earlier. He, he said he'd find his own way to theater tonight. He doesn't want to see you. He said he couldn't bear to meet a journalist in the evening. But uh, he'll call by the office tomorrow morning at 10.30 to give you his opinion of Mr. Varelli. He's a bit independent, isn't he? Does he know we're paying him for his services? I don't think he's the least bit interested in the money. Yeah, these retired experts, they don't care about the money, and so they tell you. Well, make a note so I won't forget to be available for Mr. Heller at 10.30 tomorrow. And what else? What about the girls going to volunteer? I'm sorry, Mark, I forgot to tell you. The one we picked, she won't do it. She's afraid. Afraid of what? She's afraid of Borelli doing things to her mind. <laughs> we'll get someone else. It'll be difficult on such short notice. Yeah. Oh, hello. Can I speak to Marianne, please? Hello. Hello, Marianne. How are you? Yeah. Marianne, how would you like to go to the theater tonight? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to suggest to this man that his life is in danger, that he may die at any moment. Mr. Harrison, look into my eyes. Mr. Harrison, you told me that in China, you once saw a man executed in the streets. I want you to imagine that you are in his place, that you are on your knee. On your knees. You're about to be executed by a soldier who put a single bullet through the back of your head. Look up and see the faces of the crowd. In moments, they will move away, leaving you dead on the pavement. You turn and see the soldier standing behind you, his face grim, his gun ready for firing. You are moments from death. You wait for the sound of the gun and the pain of the bullet crashing into your head. You wait for the sound of the gun and the pain of the bullet smashing into your head.
Ladies and gentlemen, I should like another volunteer. Anyone? Perhaps the young lady in the seventh row? Anyone at all? Go on. M Mark, I, I really don't, I don't think so. Come on, you promised. All right. Well, this is very kind of you. But do you mind telling me your name? Marianne Horn. Are you frightened, Miss Horn? No, I don't think so. Are you by any chance a professional entertainer? No, no. I didn't think so. You seem like a very shy girl. Oh, well, Miss Horn, do you dance? Well, as everyone does. Ballet? Oh, no. Not since a few lessons as a child. I see. Now, Miss Horn, don't be frightened. Just look into my eyes. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us tonight an expert on modern dancing. He will dance with Miss Horn, and I guarantee you that she will dance as well as the expert. Miss Horn, in a few moments you'll be hearing some music. When the music begins, you will become a dancer. Again, Miss Marion Horn. But a magnificent dancer has been lost. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your very kind attention. Magda, if you please. What happened to you? I don't know. Where'd you learn to dance like that? Mark, I don't know. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I should like to introduce my esteemed collaborator, Hugo. Now, to look at him, you might think he was just another ordinary ventriloquist dummy. Indeed, he is. But he has unexpected talents. Well, Hugo. What are you going to do to amuse the audience tonight? Anything you say, my dear Vorelli. 
accept that kind of thing. Why? What do you mean by that? Simply that you are laughing while I am talking. Well, what's wrong with that? Oh, it's an old ventriloquist trick. They're all doing it now. It's corny. Perhaps we can show the audience a variation on the theme. Give me some wine. I want some wine. A dummy? Drinking wine? Don't be ridiculous. I want some. Give it to me. I know what wine is. I've had wine before. I want some wine. Why shouldn't I have some wine? You are a dummy. That's so corny. Listen to the audience applaud. They're not applauding you. They're applauding me. Yes, me, Hugo, the dummy. Well, if it's for you, you must go and thank the audience, mustn't you? Go to the footlights and thank them. You must obey me. Hugo, walk to the footlights and thank them. Do you know who that girl was? The one you were seducing mentally. Miss Horne. Miss Marion Horne. One of the richest girls in all England. Her aunt is giving a charity ball Saturday night. I think I'll just ring up and offer my talents for charity. Call my name. <laughs> you must be hearing things. You know, I got to hand it to that Varelli. His act's certainly different. That dummy is fascinating. He frightens me. He really does seem to have some unusual powers. Yeah, for once, head office came up with a good idea in this Varelli. I still think he's a phony, but he's a damn good one. I'd certainly like to get a chance to examine that dummy. There, there, you can help me. Oh, can I now? Mm. Mm, that's just what you think. Oh, I've had enough, thank you. No, come on, please. What can I do? Well, as your aunt is holding her annual charity ball, all you've got to do is go and see the great Varelli and invite him to come. I know he will. I saw the way he eyed you when you walked up on that stage. Besides, your aunt would love it, you know it. Give me a chance to get a good close look at that doll. Oh, because you will invite him to stay the night. Hmm? It's the only way I can get a chance to examine it. 
Well, the press clippings on Varelli, no one's ever like near that doll. You won't let anyone see it or touch it unless he's using it. How about it? Well, you know he's very attractive. I might just be attracted to him. Oh. Well, I'll take that chance. How about it? All right. The things I do for you. He's too good. That Varelli is just too good. He must have some kind of gimmick. It's the work of a highly trained hypnotist. The art of hypnosis has advanced a great deal since the days of Mesmer. But how do you account for that dummy walking? Well, I think if you were to examine the dummy, you would find it a bag of mechanical tricks. Yeah, but the tension between Varelli and that dummy, it was there. Everybody felt it. Mass hypnosis, Mr. English. It's as real as individual hypnosis. What we saw was a, a dramatical production. I'm telling you, a succession of theatrical tricks. Keep your voice down. You know how important this is, Pinky. And it could be important to you, too. I'm sick of your insane jealousy. If you keep on this way, you know what will happen to you. You may go in now. Thank you. I'm very pleased that we meet again, Miss Hall. Oh, I didn't even know if you'd remember me. No. And no, I did not forget you. Oh, thank you. But I, I came to ask you for a favor. To come to your aunt's charity ball. Yes, but how did you guess? Very prosaic, I'm afraid. I uh, read in the newspaper that your aunt was giving her charity ball. I'm afraid you're right. Will you join me? What is it? A wine from Sicily. Rather sweet, but very good at this hour. I always have it. It's called Sangue della Virgine, Blood of the Virgin. Smell it. It has a lovely bouquet. Oh, it's a rather early for a drink. Oh, but this is an occasion to the charity ball. You mean you will come? If you want me. Oh, indeed we do. This is marvelous. I really didn't expect that I could walk in here and, and you'd accept the invitation just like that. Oh, but you do know it's for charity. Your fee... Will be nothing. My aunt will be so pleased. I don't know how to thank you. I should be delighted. Oh, but you, you haven't finished your drink. It's rather sweet. Look into it. It's so deep and rich and red and warm. Deep, rich, red and warm. Uh, you will come then? If you want me. Oh, Saturday then. Um, after your performance here, we'll send a car. Auntie, 
Albert, this is your fourth drink. No, dear, it's my fifth. <laughs> you enjoying yourself, darling? You're looking lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Mark. Hello. Mark, you're absolutely marvelous. You're doing everything beautifully. You know, we've never had enough publicity. Now remember, Countess Pina Jelly comes. She adores it. No worry, no will. Oh dear, I must go and talk to that dreadful Lady Hamilton. <laughs> Hey. Hmm? Oh, nothing. Daydreaming, I suppose. Mark, I don't like it. No, well, your aunt loves it. Hmm, she doesn't know what you're really here for. Yeah, as long as they get the Borelli story, what does it matter? Oh, it's just... I don't know. I wish I'd never seen him. <laughs> Mark, when do I introduce Mr. Borelli? Just about time now. Oh, dear. <laughs> Come on, don't worry. Everything will be all right. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a great surprise for you tonight. Now, will everybody at the back please come forward? Thank you. And then I'd like you to form a semicircle. I have much pleasure in presenting the great Borelli and Hugo. <clears throat> well, Hugo, I think you should sing a song for the audience. No, I am tired. Well, you're in a surly mood. I'm going to leave you alone. And when you're ready to perform, fine. In the meantime, if you'll excuse me, I would like something to eat. I've just come from the theater and I haven't had time. Oh, ham. I love it. You cannibal. Well, what would you have to eat, Hugo, to make you a cannibal? Sawdust. Don't I get anything to eat? I'm hungry. Whoever heard of a ventriloquist dummy eating? I can eat. I can eat like you can. You are not the only one who likes to eat. Don't be ridiculous. I'm hungry. I want something to eat. Now. You surely don't expect me to wait on you. No. But I do want to eat. Very well, then. Get up and get it yourself. Drink too much, Hugo. It might make the sawdust in your stomach swell. You're a dummy, Hugo. A common puppet. <coughs> Hugo. Put down the knife. I said... Put it down. You know, you frightened the ladies. You must apologize. Tell them you're sorry. I am sorry. Ladies and gentlemen. And me. I. 
Yes, say it. I am sorry. Master. Master. Upstairs ten minutes ago. He should be back by now. When he does come down, I'm going up. I've got to have a look at that dummy. It just isn't possible. It must have someone inside it. Either a small man or a boy. It's the only explanation. Other than that, it's mechanical. Darling, it's absolutely thrilling, perfectly marvelous. Una meraviglia. Have you ever seen anything so marvelous, Mark? No, never. Echo. Oh, excuse me. Mr. Borelli, you were magnificent. Thank you. Come, Carino. Il bambolo, Ugo. No, come si fa it. A mere mystery, Contessa. I think I should like a drink. Would you care to join me? That's all. Thank you. What a wonderful performance. I call, you will come. Wherever you are, you will come. But until I call, you will be yourself. Your usual charming self. I must leave you now, my dear. Gute Nacht, schöne kleine Marianne.
come, my Marianne. You have obeyed me. But you do not know you're here. Tomorrow, you will remember nothing. I will remember nothing. Very beautiful, my Marianne. She must learn to respond. Are you afraid of me? No. And why do you resist me? You're not strong enough. My thoughts have already penetrated your mind. You see, I have only to think. In Berlin, 1948, find me. In Berlin. You go. Morning, coffee, Miss English. Thanks. And how was your evening? That dummy talked to me last night. He came to my room. He came to your room, the dummy? That's right. And what did he say to you, Mark? I know this is going to sound crazy, but he asked for help. He mentioned Berlin, Berlin, 1948. When did you start having these nightmares, Mark? Tell Dr. Louise all about it. It was no nightmare. I saw and heard that dummy. It's as real as... You can't be serious. I am. Hello? That's for you, Mark. Hello. Oh, hello, Mark. Uh, Mark, Marianne is not feeling so well. The whole house is in a shambles after last night. I was wondering, I hoped you might come out here. Well, what's happened? Well, you know, Mark, the charity ball, the preparations, the excitement. Well, she's upset. I have to upset anyone. Was she all right? Well, Dr. Keisling, our family doctor's here. He'd like to have a word with you. Hello? Mr. English? Yes, Doctor? Now, there's nothing to be alarmed about, Mr. English, but I think it would be best if you were to see Marianne. Oh, what's wrong? Oh, nothing serious, but uh, I just think that you should be here. Well, it'll take me about two hours. Very well. I shall look forward to meeting you. Goodbye. I'm very glad that you were able to come so quickly. Yes. 
Yes. She seems to be in a state of semi-coma, with overtones of delirium. Make him stop now. Marianne, darling. Um, make him stop, Ma. You can't make him stop. Darling, what is it? <laughs> He's calling me, Ma. Please make him stop. Who? <laughs> I was hoping your visit would have helped. Perhaps you've been hypnotized. Beg your pardon. Borelli. <laughs> I don't understand. I'm sorry, Doctor. She's been put in a trance by a professional hypnotist, a man called Borelli. The great Borelli. Mr. English, in this day and age? <laughs> but how? For what reason? Why? You said yourself you couldn't understand the symptoms. Your very words were a strange case. Yes, we still have to make the tests. Possibly some unknown virus. Do you know Dr. Heller, the expert on hypnosis and mesmerism? <laughs> I once attended one of his lectures at the university. Very interesting theories. I'd like him to see Marianne. Well, of course, if you feel it would help, I've got no objection. But in the meanwhile, we'll carry on the tests. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> you don't believe a word I'm saying, do you? Well, let us say that I will keep what you Americans call an open mind. Yes, just come this way. Thank you. Ah. Would you mind telling me your name? Miss Panton. Miss Panton. And uh, what kind of work do you do, Miss Panton? I play cello in a symphony orchestra. Oh, really? Uh, then you must be a connoisseur of good music. Yes, I think so. And what does music do to you? Well, I, I feel things. I suppose different kinds of music make you feel different things. Oh, yes, definitely. I see. Now, Miss Patton, don't be frightened. Just look into my eyes. There, that's right. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I shall prove to you that we all have secret desires. Desires that run counter to our upbringing and surroundings and how music can indeed bring them up. Miss Panton, in a few moments you will be hearing a record. When you hear the music begin, you will become a striptease artist and you will dance for us.
you like a cup of coffee, Mark? Yeah, thanks. Hello, Dr. Heller. Hello. Hello, Mr. English. Oh, come here, Doctor. Who is that with that coffee? Yes, sir. Sit down. Thank you. I've just seen Miss Horn. Oh, how is she? Well, she has slipped back into a semi-comatose state. Oh, by the way, I called Borelli and talked to him. He confirmed my findings that Marianne has a subconscious fear of hypnosis. That's all his fault, isn't it? He can't be blamed. Marianne agreed to be hypnotized. Morelli even offered to put her into another state of hypnosis and break the control again. But uh, it's too dangerous, much yeah. too dangerous. We must find some other solution. Yes, but how? Not quite certain yet. In any case, it will take time. The mind is fragile. It has to be delicate and patient. If there was something I could do. Mr. Never mind that. Get me Bob Garrett on the phone in Berlin. The elusive Mr. Garrett. Try his hotel. If I know him, that's where he'll be. 
Hey, Mark boy, what's with the Dawn Patrol? Say, how's the action in England? Action? What action? What are you talking about? Limey Broads, man. Limey Broads. What else? Well, never mind that. I got a job for you. You've what? Look, man, I'm sweating my guts out here. I'm at my typewriter this very minute, working like hell on the Berlin Wall article. Now get a pencil and pad ready. Okay, hold on a minute. Honey, let me have the pad and pencil. Okay, Mark boy, fill me in, fill me in. A magician, a hypnotist called the Great Borelli. He used to work in Berlin. I want you to find out everything, repeat everything available on the man. I want you to go way back, as far back as 1947. I want to know who he is, where he came from, and who he worked with. Check the police files, the hospitals, the birth records, and the theaters. You got that? Slow down, Mark boy, slow down. How do you spell it? D-O-R-E-L-L-I. Okay. Now get your tail out of bed and get to work. We'll call, we'll call. Stay cool and all that jazz, boy. Hey, how did you know I was in bed? It figures, boy, it figures. Call me the minute you get something. So long, Bobby. Okay. Hmm. Raleigh's assistant was found dead. Listen to this. Miss Cardenas was last seen alive by Carlos Santi, the stage dresser at 745 last night. He returned to awaken her for the evening performance at 8.10, he found her dead. Now, Mr. Jack Walton, the manager of the theater, has stated that Mr. Borelli was in his office, where he was talking with British customs officials concerning passport and clearance papers for a pending trip to Spain. Now, the customs official have verified Mr. Walton's statement. They were interrupted by shouts from Carlos Santi, who had just found the body. Now, here's the gem. Listen. Mr. Borelli said, quote, the poor girl had not an enemy in the world, the most shocking crime. I hope the police will persevere, find the murderer, and see that justice is done. I will miss her very much indeed. The great Borelli with an airtight alibi. You know what I think? I think he killed her. Somehow he killed her. Let's see what Bob Garrett digs up in Berlin. Nothing we've done so far has helped. The new drug from America seems to have a tranquilizing effect. That is something. Mr. Varelli called again today. He seemed very concerned about Marianne. Yes, he calls regularly. Very nice chap. Doctor, I think you should come up and see Miss Horn. She's still delirious. I was afraid of that. Another injection, nurse. One half cc. Phone call for you, Mark. Your office. How is she? Hello, Louisa. Yeah, what is it? He's on to something. What does that mean? 
Is that all he told you? Louisa, get me a ticket on the next plane to Berlin. Call Garrett and have him meet me at the airport. Have him reserve me a room with the Hilton. Now I don't know how long I'll be there. You know the routine well enough. Yes, sir. Poor Max. I shall miss her in many ways. Uh, you will go on in her place tonight. Thank you, sir. Uh, you may go now, Grace. I shall try not to disappoint you, Mr. Varley. I'm sure you won't, my dear. Well, where do we start? Relax, Mark. Relax. I'll tell you all about it. In 1947, Borelli was just breaking into vaudeville. But before that, he was a doctor. A doctor? The way I get it, after he got his degree, he refused to practice. He became a fanatic on the mysteries of the East, even went out there to study. Where? Egypt, India, Burma. And we suspect an entire year with the Lamas in Tibet, always studying the same thing. Hypnosis? No, not exactly. It's more like he believed that you could separate man from his soul. It's really hard to pin down, Mark. What about the Vaudeville Act? In December 47, he was kicked out of the Medical Society. I haven't had a chance to check up on the reasons yet, but anyway, he was kicked out. The next anybody saw of him is when he showed up in Vaudeville. He had this act with a boy and girl, hypnotism and all that jazz. He'd put them under and they'd do things. One of the tricks Varelli did was to stick a dagger into the boy. Through a friend of mine, I've been able to locate the woman. That's where I'm taking you now. Hmm. I think you might be from the American police, looking for something. No, we are not from the police. What is it, then, you want? I want to know what happened in 1948, when you worked with him. There was an accident, wasn't there? Hmm. Yeah. And they would not listen to me. Your partner. A boy, part of the act? Oh, yes. Hugo. Hugo? Tell us about it. It would be better to... cut for Ellie's throat, hmm? It was a long time ago. I was younger. Vorelli hired Hugo Novik and me. We had an act, Hugo and I. Dancers. We made little money, but we were happy. Vorelli said we would make more. Okay. Let's go on. Vorelli would hypnotize us, make us do things, but off stage. We were ourselves. But then Hugo changed. Vorelli became his master. Then, he got the dummy. Oh, 
It looks like Hugo. Yes, it could resemble me. It will be. It will be. Get out, and don't come back until I call for you. You will not believe this. The police did not believe, but I saw. One night, I come into the dressing room. It is a dress rehearsal, like taking the soul of Hugo giving it to the dummy. I tell you, I saw. I believe you, Mercedes. Then you are the first. And I am not alone. There is another who knows. Well, go on, what happened next? I told you, Vorelli would hypnotize us, make me do foolish things. He made Hugo lift incredible weights. Stick a dagger into him here, to his breast. Then, one night. This time, Hugo, you're going to die. He is my slave. He will feel nothing. That is the power of hypnotism. Behold. times before, Hugo felt nothing. But this time, Hugo felt the blood come. A little hard to believe. Nobody believes. The police, nobody. Hans, come here. They would not believe Hans either. Do you want me, Mercedes? Hans, here he is. He will tell you. These are reporters. They want to know about Forelli. Tell well, them. Go on. Tell them about the dummy. Well, there isn't much I can say. I was a cleaner at the time. I was not even on the stage when it happened. I was in Borelli's room. Everybody was out so I could clean up the room. I did not see, but I heard. 
Then the dagger oh. plunged into Hugo. Oh. Oh. I saw the puppet. I ran. Then the police. Confusion. A hearing. Did you both testify at the hearing? Yeah, they ask questions. I tell them. They laugh, call me crazy. What was the verdict? He willingly took the risk. Accident. He lived for three months after the accident in a hospital like a vegetable. He did not move for three months. Just lay there and looked at the ceiling. Then he died. He died. Look, gentlemen, I don't want to push you out, but uh, Mercedes has some business to attend to. The customers come here, you know. So if you're through, perhaps you would give us a hundred marks for the information. Well, we lose more than that in time already. Hey, Bobby, take me right back to that airport. First, I thought Varelli had a mechanical doll. Or even a living person inside the dummy. I even sneaked into his room and examined the doll, but it was nothing but a wooden puppet. You know, I never told you this before, Doctor, but the night I examined that doll, it came to my room. It talked to me. <laughs> you were dreaming. Yeah, I knew you'd say that. And at first I thought I was dreaming too. But what that doll told me led me directly to Mercedes in Berlin. Now, I know you'll think I'm mad. But somehow, he's put a man's life into that doll. You have a most vivid imagination. But I just don't like it, Doctor. Marianne is bedridden. It's too like Hugo Novick. For three months, he lay in a bed helpless. You are magnifying this problem. With Hugo Novick, it was catalepsy. Catalepsy? Oh, there's no question. A perfect case of traumatic shock. Well, that explains it. The dagger. And he, instead of telling him it wouldn't hurt, he probably told him he would die. Or all but die. And for three months, he lay in a hospital helpless while Varelli completed his transfer. He put his spirit into that dummy before Hugo died. And all this while, Hugo Novick's soul has been inside a dummy. Ah, this is mad. And besides, Marianne never suffered from any traumatic shocks. Well, maybe she did, I don't know. The night Varelli performed out at her aunt's house, something happened to her in his room. The next day, she was lying helpless in bed. Anyway, Hugo Novak was 15 years ago. His powers may have advanced since then. You are wasting your time, Mark. I tell you, he's robbed this man's soul. I don't know how, and I can't give you any scientific explanations, but I do know that's what's happened. Mark. Now, do you really think we should seriously discuss this? A soul transferred by a vaudeville magician. Borelli is no mere vaudeville magician. Look at Marianne. That's a very highly strung girl. Is it? Hers is a case of interrupted hypnosis. This I can understand. I... OK, what do you suggest? That you forget all this foolishness. Forget about Borelli. You are tired, overworked, and Perhaps even a little bit jealous. And that's all there is to it. You can take my word for it. I wish I could believe you. Dr. Heller here. Oh, yes, uh, Dr. Keisler. Yes? Yes. Oh, good. Uh, Marianne is awake. Perfectly normal. Oh, yes, of course, I shall be out there this afternoon. Late. Thank you, Doctor. Goodbye. Oh, thank God for that. Now, Mark, take my advice. Forget about Borelli. Forget about dummies. Marianne is much better now. Borelli is not the villain you imagine.
perhaps you shouldn't stay too long. I see. Of course. I understand. and uncle that you love me. I love you. I love you. And you will tell Mark that you are going to marry me. I'm going to marry you. I must go now. But when I call you, you will come. Remember, when I call, you will come. Hello. Hi. How are you? It's good to see you. Yeah, you're looking much better. Thank you. The doctor took me off the drugs. Mark, I, I've got to talk to you. Mm -hmm. I'm going away with Varelli. I'm in love with him. You what? I'm in love with him. I'm sorry, Mark. How can I explain? It happened the night he stayed here. I, I... I just don't know what to say. I'm sorry. Well, Hugo, tonight we fly to Spain. And there, the very wealthy and beautiful Miss Marion Horn will become my bride. It's a delicious thought. We'll give our last performance tonight and be on our way. All four of us. You, Hugo, my bride-to-be, and my ugly little wooden lady. And then... After a few months, when my transfer is complete, my beautiful young wife will die, leaving me all her money, and you with an ugly little wooden companion. But then, you're ugly too, aren't you? Same again. Bloody 
fool. I put the company to a lot of unnecessary expense for an article about a charlatan. A third-rate phony. The only woman I ever cared about falls in love with him. If they don't fire me after this fiasco, they're as crazy as I am. Sleep, my Maria. Deep, deep sleep. my lovely Marianne after the performance tonight. Hugo, you must behave when we give our last performance. You've been getting out of control much too often. You've been in your little wooden body so long you've become an individual again. I think I must teach you a little lesson. I have a few things to clear up with the manager before I leave. I shall come to your room Don't be long. as soon as I'm through with him. Hugo, I'm your master. Get back in your cage or I will destroy you. Don't be alarmed, Mr. English. Varelli is now in the wooden doll. I am his master. The tables are turned. You need have no fear for Marianne. She is sleeping peacefully. When I wake her, she will be her normal self. Mr. English, get me out of here. I am the great Varelli. He can't do this to me. Please, Mr. English, don't let him do it. I'll do anything you say. Get me out of here. I'll do anything you say. Please. I am the great 
Ferelli.